What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and it is honestly my honor and privilege to have Kevin Miller, a.k.a. the voice of Sly Cooper, uh, on the show, on the channel. Uh, Kevin, I'll say hi, and then I want to talk to you about you know what this means to me and the fans, but thank you so much uh, for being here You know, from me and from everybody you know, listening at home. Well, thank you for having me. I'm I'm pleased to be here. You have been kind and persistent in your pursuing me to join the podcast, so I'm honored to be here and uh, excited to chat. Well, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, to start this off, so, you know, we're going to go through, I have my own questions. I asked, uh, you know, the people in, in the Podcast Now community for you guys is uh, questions that we'll, we'll ask Kevin throughout it, some that I'm sure will get answers and some that uh, will probably be met with pretty short answers. But I do want to thank you, Kevin, honestly, from me and from everybody else, I think, One thing, and it can even lead into the first thing we want to talk about. You know, I've said it multiple times. Sly is what I grew up on. You know, there's Jack and Daxter, Crash, Spyro, all these. Sly was mine. Um, And so, you know, to be able to talk to you, A, from just a personal level, is absolutely incredible. So I'm really happy, uh, uh, you know, that you were able to do this and and just hear the voice. Um, And then even from people, you know, around the community, I think Sly... Sly special, and I think, and you know, that goes to the whole Sony thing with the Sly Five and all that stuff. Sly is really important to people, even people that have never played these games before. I see it in all the videos I've made. People, you know, we talk about a remake or a remaster. Everybody's on board. You know, even people Mm -hmm. who played it before or have never played it, they would give it a chance. So, just want to again thank you from me, but also from the community because you know, obviously, you you know, there's more people than just you. Obviously, Sucker Punch that made uh, you know Sly One through Three, and even Thieves in Time. Uh, but thank you so much for for doing it. Absolutely, yeah, that's great. So, okay, I, I have a couple things you know I want to ask, and we'll get into you know some some community questions. I guess the first thing is, well, number one, we're coming up on the 20th anniversary of the first Sly game. So, I guess going back all the way to the roots, how did how did this happen? How did uh, you know the audition go? What was it like? You know, what was the recording process like? Especially back then, I think you know now there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff we kind of see how it's done was it any different back then like how'd all that stuff go yeah the the industry is radically different in the same way that most things are now because you can stream and transfer files and you have good recording systems in your own home uh and you can upload big mp3s easily when sly was recorded 20 years ago and auditioned for you had to go into a studio uh, you had to sit in a room just like you would for a film audition and wait for your turn to come in. And so I worked at a small studio in Los Gatos, California, where I would be, a, uh, a, I was a talent there, uh, but I was also a full-time pre-production coordinator. And uh, Sly Cooper was brought through the studio through a director friend uh, the, named uh, Nancy Fitzgerald. And uh, she brought the project through to that studio. And I, like mm, uh, probably 50 other guys, all uh, read for the part. Uh, I also read for Bentley and Murray, as did, I think, everybody. Uh, But because I was a pre-production coordinator, I would sit in the sessions and help kind of coach people through the process. And I very strategically uh, put myself as one of the last people to audition, one of the last people to record for it, because I think we did it for for five days, five days of of auditions. And... um, and because of that, I was able to kind of rehearse the part. I got to hang out with the character. And I think that was a big reason why I got the the role. Lots of times when you audition, you just get the sides, which is a little sample of the audition. You read it, and that's that's it. Uh, but I actually got to hang out with the character and got to know him a little more. So, uh, And nowadays, if you audition for voiceover work, they just send you a picture and some words. You read it in your own home, most much like what we're doing right now. You send the file away and maybe you hear back. You probably don't, uh, as opposed to actually meeting a director and getting coached through the project. Those days are kind of gone at this point. So this was a fan question, and I'll give credit to the fan too. I think it applies right here. Um, what was, what um, like, did anything change from what you were reading and what kind of the early thought of who Sly was going to be versus because it's your it's your normal voice right so you didn't really do much to you know for the the sound so did there was there any kind of personality quirks about him that evolved over time I would say I would say both it it the character because my wife will mention that often like oh it's just it's not you I'll say that but it's just my voice and she's like it's not your voice Sly has a much more presentational 
point to him. He's a little more up, you yeah. know, and you have to talk. Um, but he also, he whispers. So in the first game, 90%, uh, I think, of the lines of dialogue were intense whispers <laughs> like this. And if you go back and listen, you'll hear, like, most of Sly's dialogue is about right here. And then uh, Sly 2 came along, and I think they decided that the technology was better or something, or they just got tired of whispering the whole time. And by the time we did Sly 3, uh, I remember thinking, Sly doesn't whisper anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now, and for, now I just recently, you know, because I remember playing these games. I never, I didn't, um, you know, play them right when they had come out. I, I, I got into it a little bit later, and I was looking at the years they came out. This is just kind of a question uh, to you, just kind of because I'm, I'm interested in it. So there was a two-year gap in release between one and two, and then a one-year gap in release between two and three, and I didn't even, I never knew that. I've always looked at three and loved it. I actually, in a way, think it's the the, the best one, or at least it's maybe my favorite. How, Neat. what was the, the recording, you know, uh, like did you do two and then go right into three? Like how much of a, you know, gap was there between all that stuff? No, let's see, the the first game we recorded in Los Gatos at that, at that studio there, and then it was kind of uh, just sort of gone. And then they decided to record the second title up in Seattle. And they, uh, Sucker Punch made the decision that it was cheap or more cost effective for them to fly the talent up and live in Seattle for a week and record there rather than fly the director down and have them lose whole days just doing voiceover recording. Um, I, again, I think that's something that has dramatically changed in yeah. modern day. Uh, and as far as I know, they were working on Sly 3 while we were recording Sly 2. Jeez. So they, they kind of thought of it as a one-two punch. And as I understand, they actually were, they wanted to put the 3D stuff that was in Sly 3 in Sly 2, but they, they needed more time to develop the technology. Uh, yeah. So that's why the, uh, what's it called? Your 3D optimization goggles, I think <laughs> is what it is, yep. is, uh, is only in the third game. Yep. I remember getting that for, I got, I got three, I got two and three, I think for Christmas, maybe back to back years, but again, I think it was later. And I remember the glad I was like, because I've never, I never played any game that had that. And I was like, what is that? What the heck is, is going on here? So final, I guess two questions before, or a couple extra things we'll get into, uh, you know, what the community wants to hear. So what well, you talked about, like a week so how long just i guess for again people that are curious how long was the recording process for uh if you want to talk about four because i guess the next question is talking about thieves in time too so how long was the recording for each of these well yeah though and that's those are very dramatic uh differences yeah uh, thieves in time versus the recording schedule for the first games uh so i want to say the first game probably was off and on for a couple months uh, I remember the very last things we recorded were the words zigzag voodoo. And that was probably just a few months before the game was released. And that was because they originally had the words up, down, left, right. And I think someone at Sony decided it was too close to Dance Dance Revolution. Oh my God. So we had to change it to zigzag. And you can't do X circle, whatever. So uh, that was the last words. And then Sly 2, I think, was pretty much recorded... Uh, in a week, and I think Sly 3 was recorded in a week. That's very rare. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, we had to have done pickups, and pickups are, you know, later you go, oh, we need to record some extra lines, or something got changed. And they might have flown me up a couple times for those. I think one one time I just so happened to be up in that neighborhood doing work for another company, and I, I, I popped over to the studio and recorded something. And so that was really, it was a weird time that I had multiple reasons to be coming up to Seattle. So contrast that to Sly uh, Thieves in Time, uh, they they had a very different recording schedule where we would record a level at a time over the series of months. So it would be one or two days that we'd record the, the opening level, and then I'd hear back from them a month later, and we'd have one or two sessions for the next world and the next world. And they would be developing those worlds why we'd be recording almost like episodes of a TV show. Yeah. Uh, and that was kind of their production schedule, which I thought was, uh, and that, which was cool. And it, as a result, we were working on it for a really long time, which is rare. Usually voice is like the last thing to be done, but for, for their production cycle, they wanted to have the, the cast in the game as much as possible right. uh, during the development. So that was, that was pretty fun to see the project kind of evolve over time right and so and so let me ask you this uh you know honest question again you can you answer it however you're able to or however you want so 
I think I think it's a general kind of, uh, uh, I guess, large opinion from people online. One through three are very, very good. And then four, I, now I personally liked four. I don't, you know, I don't think it's it's better than two or three, but I personally really liked it. I have fond memories. My friend and I played two and three together, and then we kind of came back just like the, the gang did many, many years later to play. And as we were older, I was like 16, 17, somewhere in that range when sure, yeah. Days and Time came out. And I, I mean, I remember it so well, but obviously, you know, reception wasn't great from, I guess, either end. Sales weren't as great. So what, you know, you talk about the experience of making it. What was it like, I guess, getting the call, right, that Sly's coming back after all this long? And then, you know, I think fans still like it. I'm sure you've heard probably positive things about it. But what was it like kind of afterwards with the reception that, that you saw? Well, I um, it was super exciting to get that phone call. I think the, that there was another Sly. I remember at the time kind of suspecting something was in the works because we had done um, PlayStation Heroes on the Move. And I think we had already done... I think, was um, All-Stars already out at the time, too? Yeah, and yeah. we had already done All-Stars. So I could sense, I could I remember being in sessions and getting hints that there were talks of more Sly uh, somewhere out there. So when the phone, when that first phone call came for, um, for I think, uh, All-Stars, no, it was he Heroes on the Move. That was a real surprise. Like, oh, okay, so Sly's still, Sly's still around. Um, and, but then when Thieves in Time came, that was really exciting. And it was like kind of showing back up for work, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, uh, and we, we recorded in a new studio down here in Los Angeles at uh, Bang Zoom, which is, has a lot of anime and a lot of localization projects. So, uh, and they're great folks. It was great to hang out with them. So I guess one final thing that I'll say until we get to some obvious questions and not so obvious is back to the beginning. You know, I was talking about uh, just kind of a, a, a passion kind of question. What is it? mean yeah. to you obviously that kind of uh you know response of slide for that that gets you excited what does it mean to you that here we are you know 19 20 years later almost after it and you know it's not i guess around as much as maybe some people think it should be or uh but you know it's still kicking there's a lot of people that still are really passionate sure. about yeah. it you've played it on your twitch channel and all that stuff so what does it mean to you that you're part of this you know you're part of this thing that stuck around obviously a big icon back in the day but still something that hangs around has people hoping could come back yeah i uh, i can't fully process the the impact that it made i remember recording it what 20 or uh, 15 years ago and and knowing that we were making something for eight-year-olds and and being excited for kids to be able to play it I and and I did a lot of work at the time I was working for Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. So I was working a lot with with kids in general. And what it never occurred to me at the time was that the that this stuff would mean that much to somebody uh, that that they would grow up and treasure the character in the same way that I grew up treasuring uh, the Ghostbusters and Transformers and uh, Battle Beasts that the that Sly would have that all important uh, shelf in someone's heart of the character that they resonate with. So it's, uh, I'm beyond honored. Uh, like the fact that people still love Sly, still want to hear more of Sly's adventures. I, cause I had done other work. I had done other video games and, and other games, um, but nothing, nothing like Sly. Sly is clearly special and it means a lot to people. And, and it goes to prove that now, nearly 20 years later, Sly has some of the, the kindest, most fun fans that anyone could ask for. Oh, yeah. yeah um, the, the, most, and, the most into what they get is just demanding more games. You know, that's right. Really so that. you mentioned my podcast or you mentioned my Twitch stream. The reason I have that is because I, I did a podcast and we're on hiatus because of uh, COVID. Uh, but we do the Gamerland podcast, my, my buddy and I, and have for over 10 years. Well, the podcast was found by fans of Sly, and they became such huge fans of it that they then found, they created this Discord server that um, I invited you to today. And they're my moderators for for the Gamerland um, podcast and the Twitch stream that I do. And they, I didn't choose them. This is the thing that I find remarkable all the time. I didn't have to go and do casting or audition or interview people to find out if they would be cool or understand how to be community leaders. They self-selected and created their own community. And it's because they recognize that Sly is a place where people should be kind to each other and, and work collaboratively. And as a result, like I've had to do no 
<laughs> work to keep the community uh, working well together. In fact, if I tried, it wouldn't be as good right. as what the this group of moderators have, have generated because they love Sly. And as a result, we've kind of created this family together. Yeah, no, that's absolutely, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear. So, well, before I get into the community questions, Kevin, they would literally um, have my head if I didn't at least try. I know the answer is obviously no. Uh, Sly 5 slash uh, Sly Remake, you know nothing about it, correct? I do. I know nothing about it. Okay, just got to get uh, that out of the way, and, uh, <laughs> and then we'll move. Okay, so let's let's move to what the people have to say. Some of these things uh, may be already repeated, so I'll try to uh, kind of jump around. So uh, Kenneth Davey says, maybe you could ask him what was up with the Sly Cooper movie slash TV show, which we did not talk about. I don't know how much you're allowed to say, but we'll get into it in a second. And then secondly, how does he get into the role of Sly and then uh, and go from there? So I guess, yeah. Now, uh, again, I don't know what you're able to say. So I was moderately even interested in the show slash movie because it just it looks so radically different i was uh, interested in it uh you know again behind the scenes i don't know what the heck happened but obviously from the fan perspective it was coming and then it disappeared off the face of the earth yeah you know that's about as much as i know too yeah uh, and I, w <laughs> I wish i had more but that i was along with for the ride just like everybody else uh and then so and then how how did you get and so you talked about whispering so <laughs> I guess did you have to do any uh, vocal exercise or but how do you I guess how do you embrace uh, because like you said you know the community being the way that it is it really I think does come from pro well I I feel like it probably does come from Sly himself because he is the most boldly uh, kind of like uh, warm hearted of the of the mm. group even like Murray I guess more of like a, a brute but obviously still lovable and Bentley more of like you know the, the intellect but Sly we play as him the most so did you have to do anything for that? Yeah you know in during the sessions I would always carry a pencil and in fact if you asked me to be if I was asked to go in and record a Sly right now I'd have to bring a pencil with me and I kind of hold it as if I'm going to write at any moment uh, but my, I couldn't, like my, my fingers are kind of crossed over it and it sits on my thumb and that slice cane in my mind. <laughs> I just sort of hold that and, uh, and then I, I find that I kind of prop my shoulders up and kind of bring my hands in front of me as if, uh, I was a really bad ninja and I could just do like back and forth karate chops. And that's, and that's what lets, uh, my body kind of create sly. Uh, and that, and that's been the truth since the very beginning all the way through now, like, that's how I become Sly. <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, KJ Games says, uh, please ask him, and this, this was asked a couple of times, which of your, now I don't know if this is a thing where it's like, you know, you can't pick the favorite child or whatever, but do you have a, basically a favorite game of the Sly games and why? Yeah, I like that. It is. It does feel like a favorite child because they're all you know special for their own reasons. But uh, having gone through them recently on my Twitch stream, I've come to really appreciate just what a what a gem Sly Two is. Yeah. Uh, and Sly Three, as I'm I'm actually playing that right now on the stream, makes some really bold choices. That pirate level has <laughs> so many different variations. It's like a game in of itself. Yeah. And Sly Three's level of mini games are phenomenal. Of course, Sly 1, world building is great, and I love the work that we did on Sly 4 going through time. But the kind of groundbreaking daringness that Sly 2 offers and the amount of content that that oh, yeah. game offers is is kind of mind blowing. It's it's a real special game, I and, think. And, and well, I've, and I've said the story uh, in a video a couple uh, weeks ago. I played the game. I actually thought it was too difficult. I don't know why. I got stuck, I believe, in Dimitri's <laughs> level, and and I returned the game and then my grandparents got it for me for Christmas. But speaking to your, you know, that it has a lot of content, I saw in the video of me talking about that there were people that said they played Dimitri's level, Paris, and then they thought that was the game and they quit because they, oh, thought, really? you know, well. they thought that was it. <laughs> and then they, they realized there's a whole lot more content. So, yeah, I mean, that game, <laughs> that game was bold. That game was huge. And Thieves in Time, uh, to its credit, by the way, Time, you know, which, which uh, what Crash has done literally last year, it was ahead of its yeah. time, to be flat out honest with you. Um, That's right, yeah. Jessica or Jessica Y. Skull said, this is great. I look forward to listening to the interview. My question is, if he could voice any character in any other video game, what game would it be? And why? My, I, the game, the part I always wanted was Multiple Man from uh, from the uh, X Men comic books and X Factor. Oh, okay. Uh, he was in uh, I think the Avengers game, and I've read for him a couple times, but never never landed the role. So that's the first that's the first uh, name that comes to mind. Uh, I think that'd be pretty sweet. 
nice. to uh, to be multiple man. He's he's one of my favorite superheroes. If <laughs> if not my favorite superhero. Uh, otherwise, I'd love to be in Guild Wars too. I'd take any part in that game. <laughs> diversity. There's a lot of diversity. That's right. Diversity. Yeah. Lassie, and I'm gonna just I'm not even gonna say their last names. I'm just gonna destroy it. Uh, you could ask what his opinion on Thieves and Time is, and how he felt giving his voice to that Sly game. So I guess more to, but yeah. Um, well, I guess to to kind of hop on that. So what was it like? I guess uh, you know we talked about obviously all those years later getting the call. But you know what was what was your opinion? I guess on the game when it was coming out, and even right now. Oh, I I love Thieves in Time. I love seeing Sly in HD. Uh, you really get to appreciate the amount of the work that goes into that game when you compare it to the first to the PS2 titles. Um, and I yeah, I, I dig it. I think it's I think we have a fun cast in Sly 4. We got a really a lot of big names in there with Nolan North and Gray. Yeah, um, yeah I think it, I think it's a swell game. I like and I love time travel. So anytime you can jump through time, I think is a big win. <laughs> yeah, you got to. Okay, so Alexander Ivan, uh, was there a canceled Sly Five game or a canceled Sly something uh, that we never knew of? So, well, one thing I kind of want to add, and again, I don't know what you're able to say from this, but Sanzaru has declared it. I don't know if that gives you more rain or not to say it, but there was uh, there was you know basically additional content planned and uh and even developed they talked about you know the whole episodes after thieves and time so did you do additional work are you allowed to say yeah no i never read anything for so i know that there was plans for the egypt level and then there was talk about it being dlc or like an add-on and that never came they never got to a place where they had us read for that and then i also know senzaru or i believe it was them was developing a ps vita title uh, Sly Network of Thieves, which was going to have some network um, or, or player versus player elements, and that game also never came to fruition. And I never, I never read for that as well. And I only know about that because the internet has told me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that sounds like because there, uh, actually a few weeks ago on Reddit there was a leaked thing of not just Sly Four but Resistance. Um, the I think the Vita version, the Vita game, they did that of the pitch meeting of like the budget yeah. of the idea. And they talk about you know incorporating certain multiplayer elements that weren't in Thieves in Time. So that was that was really That's actually right. really cool. They talked about you know appealing to the younger audience, but also the people who originally bought the game. Talked about the budget, all that stuff. It was really cool. Um, Tyler Barber, and this is I think an important thing even uh, even to plug your stuff. Uh, can ask him what his next video game role will be. So you're on Twitch. You have a podcast. Is there anything you? We'll do a couple more. But is there anything uh, you know you'd like to plug in terms of what you're doing? In the future anything i want to plug yeah 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 i mean yeah definitely check out uh my twitch stream it's um twitch.tv slash the kevin miller and then you can head over to the gamerland podcast we're hoping to do uh, uh some episodes again real soon and we again we've been on hiatus uh thanks to covid you can see that at gamerlandpodcast.com or i think we even have facebook.com slash gamerland podcast and, uh, and it's formally the second funniest podcast. So the first iteration of the show is just my buddy and I, uh, who we're, we're both comedians. So we were uh, doing yuck yucks on the podcast. <laughs> and then after a while, we realized that we like video games and so do our listeners. So we became the Gamerland podcast. Uh, but yeah, definitely check. I tried to do a stream uh, most Thursdays. Uh, I might be moving that over to Tuesdays uh, soon or do both. But uh, yeah, give me a follow and I'm going to do a giveaway pretty soon, too of a signed version or a signed uh, Sly Cooper Funko Pop. Uh, so yeah. I'll be um, I'll be doing that through the Twitch stream. Check out more details there as they unfold. Nice. Okay, so Faisal, and there's no way I'm saying that name right, so I'm so sorry. Uh, he said, what's your favorite <laughs> I game? I think you said it right. You just own it. Yeah, you yeah, have I mean, what I mess up names continuously on this channel. It's okay. Uh, question, what is your favorite game? And then also in terms of voice acting. So what is my favorite game? Like game at well, I I mean I'm a big gamer. I don't know if that's come through <laughs> with my Gamerland podcast, uh, but I I play a lot of stuff um, of uh, across the spectrum. So favorite game is is really hard to say, but uh, I play like I mentioned earlier. I play Guild Wars two every day, uh, but I'm I'm a huge fan of of old classics like Yoshi's Island or Portal two. I have good places in my heart. Uh, I've been playing Cyberpunk, uh, and today I played Lego Dimensions with my kids. Uh, I have every Skylander that has ever been made, uh, and uh, have played that to death, and will continue to play that for as long as I can. We have Disney Infinity, so I do all the toys to game stuff. 
uh been playing bowser's fury a bunch so i i pop around genre to genre i think we were doing call of duty the other night uh, i don't discriminate <laughs> <laughs> nice well and to, to break from the community questions i have a quick one i just thought of do you yeah. keep up with sucker punch specific games so like ghost of tsushima oh yeah uh, infamous yeah, yeah, yeah. You move to that absolutely ghost of tsushima is is a masterful artwork game and when the game came out i just sent nate uh, an email i was like hey man love your game it's looking really good i'd seen him in an interview and some accolades and i just like great job i really love it his response was thanks it took a long time to make oh my god yeah yeah no it did did now so I have uh, no doubt was there ever any um so like you, I, you haven't done any voice even like uh just popping in an infamous or ghost was there any interest or you think it's possible i would love to yeah i would love to do that i think both of those titles were motion capture yeah. so uh, they yeah. uh thinking about a sly cooper cameo just probably wasn't on their mind <laughs> though uh they do always find ways to sneak sly uh yeah, that's, into their that's, games that's the thing would... with with people's you know wanting of of you know, future ones too is companies have not forgotten. And I maybe I think yeah. that's honestly what even upsets people is that okay, you ratchet and clank even, right? You literally put the truck in all this yeah. stuff and uh and you, you just forgot to bring the game back and all. Okay, rapid fire from Caleb. Could you ask Go him what his version of a Sly Cooper would look like or Sly Cooper sequel would look like? So I guess if you had to continue it, um what were the original concepts of the cooper gang characters was it always hippo raccoon turtle he says wants to thank you you know personally from us fans we love you man hope to see you more uh, in the future Very kind. yeah let's see i uh, i mean a uh, sly five what i've always thought would be fun because i know one of the issues with the sly franchise is that it doesn't um it, it, it targets an audience that is playing things like uh, garden warfare plants versus zombies or you know a uh, fortnite so how do you create multiplayer community stuff in a game like Sly that's story driven? So I'd like to see that of like to be able to play a campaign with Sly, but then also maybe make your own Sly or or build a roster of uh, bad guys and then play cops and robbers with Carmelita and and the Interpol and do like a battle, uh, capture the flag style event with stealing and capturing people on maps. I've always thought that would be really fun in the world, true to the world. And then also be able to have a campaign, so something for everyone. Uh, and then uh, character-wise, I've never known Sly, Bentley, and Murray to be anything other than a, a raccoon, turtle, and, and hippo, respectively. Uh, so if they were ever anything other than that, that was in the stage far earlier than I was ever involved. Uh, so I'll, I'll just say that I think they were all going to originally be snails and somebody was like, <laughs> yeah, how about something radical. cooler than that? So, <laughs> yep. uh, quick one for Mr. Hapo. Uh, I, I think you've, you maybe have already answered this, but if you had the chance to play him again in future games, would you say yes? Oh, to yeah. That? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would never say no. I'm never going to say no to playing slot. That's nice. never going to happen. What was your favorite? This comes from the Hunter. What was your favorite game with famous PlayStation? So this is a, a more this is a more specific one. Favorite game, but that had PlayStation mascots. So Ratchet, Jack, Crash, Spyro. Uh, wait. Maybe I don't know. Like, what's so, my oh, just other your favorite? favorite... Game. I guess favorite game of the back in the you know early two thousands of the PlayStation. Oh, mascots. well, slide. I mean, obviously, it's like Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Ask him about if the 20th anniversary coming up, if there's anything related to Sly movie game. So, okay, obviously you've said it. I don't think so. You know, I, I, I've i seen a lot of fans say, oh, it's the 20th anniversary, 20th anniversary is in, what, two months from now from when we're recording. I I don't believe there are any plans to do well, I think anything. It's, it's next, uh, Sly, Sly 1 was 2002. So it's next year. Oh, that's next right. It'll September. be next year. Okay, so yeah. we got a little time. That's right. We're recorded in 2001, <laughs> and the game came out in 2002. Yeah, I don't anticipate that could be that could be untrue. Uh, who knows what Sony? All it, for stuff like that. Somebody at Sony Marketing has to go. Oh, here here's an opportunity. We should sell something. Right. Uh, at this point, what I could see is them doing whatever the PS Now version of the PS5 is and making the game cheaper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that would be the lowest hanging fruit, I think, for, for Sony to do. Yeah. Uh, if they're making any plans to make the 20th anniversary special, I have yet to be involved. <laughs> and then is there any hope for Sly 5 or Sly Remake? This comes this comes from my cousin, Tyler. Uh, any hope for Sly 5 or Sly Remake? Hopefully. Uh, is there any hope? Well, uh, okay. Well, this is even further removed, I think, of you knowing. Is there any hope for PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale 2? I think it would be Oof. awesome. 
I, I would it. think that would be awesome. That studio doesn't exist yeah, anymore. Yep. It was Santa Monica Games, and they were they, they were a cool group of people and uh, and very sharp uh, folks. And yeah. I'm bummed. Notorious that that is only building closed. it from fighting game veterans, uh, developers, and then <laughs> beginning their yeah. thing and then shutting them down after. Yeah, yeah, uh, that was a bummer. I would have loved. I I believe that franchise could have taken off forever. Yeah. We could have seen Me too. more and more installation, new characters all the time. I think that is that is lamentable to see that go away. Yeah, maybe they bring it back with their push into more live service or keeping games around longer. Yeah, maybe. Uh, cool. What's the hardest part of being a voice actor? Oh, the hardest part of being a voice actor: showing up to work on time. I don't know. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Is there a bad part? I can only say that like uh the well, so you challenge said you recorded them during in... a week does it get like tough on your voice to talk that i mean yeah, i talk I, too it, much is it uh, hard to talk when that you much? do a long session you have the headphones on your head you're talking shouting presenting you're reading uh it gets exhausting and a, and a union session is four hours yeah uh but you can go up to six i think eight uh if you're really crazy but and it, i've gotten like loopy by the end of it like not quite uh human anymore so but you kind of shake that off after about two hours so <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it isn't it, it does get strange i think and the headphones are a big part of it hearing yourself shout while you talk is a little disorienting for yeah. that long a period and then his final are there's there any uh voices or games you'd love to work on you already answered that one um he said or Lazarus King 1990. You can't be interviewing Sly Cooper himself without asking him. Sly, just jump and hit the circle button. Very good. <laughs> I always, uh, not, not I like question, that. I but think, yes, I agree. Yeah, I think that would fly nowadays. I never really looked at that as, again, maybe it was because I was younger. I never looked at that as all that cheesy, but you see it now and it's like, wow. The, the, because that doesn't really happen all that much anymore. Talking about even kids' games, crash games, uh, even like the the newer ones they do, they don't really yeah. reference buttons anymore. Well, you don't have to because the media literacy has improved so much. You, you, even in the time when sl the Sly games came out, there was an instruction manual, right? Because there was you needed to explain yeah. push the controller this way <laughs> to make the guy move. Yeah. And in 2002, 3D camera stuff was was. 10 years old at the most yeah uh that would be going back to like uh, mario 64 and uh or for you know for a console to have that camera behind you so yeah i mean nowadays it's like you just you pick it up and go you don't need that level of instruction yeah and then he said if there's one thing you could add to the sly cooper series what would it be i'm thinking either mechanics or possible locations you talked a little mm. bit about what a five would be uh, yeah i i would like uh I like to see. I always thought a good mission for Sly would be to steal a moon rock from, like, an observatory or something. <laughs> I don't know why. I always thought that would be a cool be mission fun. for Sly to steal. Yeah. Uh, and then Cooper Hennen, how was the process with working with Sucker Punch early in development? And was Sly's so this one's personality? Was Sly's personality always set on being charming, uh, the charming, witty guy, or did they test yeah. other things about him? No, he was always um, he was always Sly. Sly was always cool and mischievous and confident that was that and then the only thing that changed is the character grew over time obviously in sly one the beginning of the game he's trying to live up to his parents um uh, history or thiefing uh, family reputation by the time you get to sly three you know he was writing his name in the thievius raccoonus and kind of conquered that but that's that's an expected evolution of a character there uh, i think for as long as i've known sly he's he's been the same guy yeah, um, Juan says, ask him what his favorite Sly game, Sly 2, you said. And then Blue Blur 86 I've always wanted to ask Kevin Miller how hard it must be for him knowing that he voices such a beloved character in Sly Cooper, but how he feels about... The oh, okay, this is this is interesting, and I don't know how much you can say. Um, such a beloved character in Sly Cooper, but how he feels about neglect that Sony has given the franchise. Oh, yeah, bummed. I would love to see more Sly. Yeah. I think I think Sly's got a lot of legs to him and is a very interesting world and but you know I'd love to see TV series and and movies and video games every year. Uh yeah, more more Sly. <laughs> so well, and let me ask you this is the is, that was the last community question so maybe final question for me. Do you think uh, Sly has a place now? I I think game, I think if you break it down any way you want, gaming mechanics, story, all that stuff, I think he perfectly fits especially with 
remakes and bringing back Spyro, Crash. So I, I think he works, but do you think, you know, if a game did come out 2022, 2023, you think it would work nowadays? Yeah, I, I do. I guess I feel two things about it, maybe three. Uh, the, the first is I agree with your statement that in a world of retro content from 20 years ago, uh, I don't know why Sly isn't in that lineup, uh, but we at least we got a Funko Pop. So, yep. you know, and I had a I had a campaign for a while to get a Sly Funko Pop. Is that an indicator that there's more interest? I don't know. Uh, it makes sense to me that we would see more Sly or a return to Sly, yeah. but it would be nostalgia based. Uh, and so just something recently that occurred to me, and this is my second point, is that I think I finally understand maybe why Sony doesn't uh, lean into Sly. And it's uh, because if you compare it to like Nintendo, where something like Sly Cooper would live very easily, you know, it's the same sort of genre game, and it, it goes for the same audience, same age group. Uh, if he if he was on the PlayStation, he'd kind of be alone on that island. Um, there, you need other titles for that audience to justify buying a PS5 and then playing other games like it. And I think Sony has made the decision to target a, an older audience at this point. Yeah. But, and this is my third point, the passion and love that Sly has, I believe it is only a matter of time until someone who has that level of passion and love for Sly finally lands a role within Sony uh, Entertainment and gets to say, we're bringing Sly back. Yeah. And uh, you see this in every iter every remake of anything ever is always because it meant something to someone when they were a kid and they finally are in a position where they get to see it get new life. Right. My goal is to be alive when that day comes. <laughs> so. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, and honestly, I mean, and they're reaching for straws, of course, but the Funko Pop was announced with, I think, like, uh, Master Chief was announced during that Funko Pop with, with Sly. There was a couple other, Sir Daniel of, of Meta Evil. Sly yeah, got right. the most likes on any social media outlet, uh, whether it be Funko's Twitter or uh, Funko's Instagram. It, like, tripled anybody else. When Insomniac was, was posting their pictures for Ratchet & Clank the, a couple days before, and they had Horizon, they had Uncharted 4, which is one of the most popular games in the world, Sly actually, in terms of likes and retweets and engagement, more than doubled any of the other ones. So, you know, yeah. I'm not saying that well, means... Well, I'll just say this, that, you know, Star Wars was beloved when it came out in 77 and its two sequels were a cultural phenomenon, reshaped the movie industry and reshaped how people go to movies. And then they didn't make another one for <laughs> 16 years, yep. right? And it became a religion. People would watch that movie every weekend, for their entire childhood and young adult life to the point where people have it memorized as if it were the gospels of jesus <laughs> and now people worship star wars as if it were the gospels yeah. of jesus it's its own religion. so yes uh i i think that the same thing can kind of happen with sly that it's going to build this desire for more so the moment that there is some scrap of franchise of of uh, merchandise that people are like yes please yes please and so i hope that that eventually erupts into some new content for us yep i mean i, I just think in the age of remakes and bringing back old games and uh, now you make a good point I, i've never actually brought that up in terms of building it not just with sly but with other things so all right well to end this number one if there if if there ever is a sly five or a remake uh good luck on the gig and uh, we wish you, uh, you the absolute best on on it all um but no honestly thank you from the bottom of my heart for you know, being on this, again, uh, Sly means the world to me. One of my favorite franchises. One of the things I think probably that started me uh, in gaming. So it means a ton uh, to me to be able to talk to you. And again, uh, not I mean, you know, because it's, it's touched you personally with your Discord and with Twitch and all that stuff. But you see the Sly community. I mean, there's channels, including mine. Whenever we publish uh, Sly stuff, there are people. In fact, Sly videos are some of my most popular content I make. That's awesome. Um, so there's people out there that love you, that love the franchise, and, and want literally to ask you 10 times a day if there's a Sly 5. So thank you from all <laughs> of us uh, for being being here. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And uh, podcast now. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you think. If you want to ask in the comments for Sly 5, only I will respond. So you can ask me a thousand times if you want. Thank you, Kevin, <laughs> once again for being here. And we'll see you all on the next video. Thanks for having me.